What is instrumentation? In this video, we're going to cover the surface of what instrumentation is. Let's go ahead and dig in. What is up? My name is JC. And I'm an instrumentation technician, and I make these videos for the upcoming instrumentation tech that's want to learn more about the craft and to make these skills more accessible for them. So first off, basically instrumentation is a technology that's used in manufacturing that allows them to run automatically. So for example, it's instead of input process output, instrumentation allows it to be input process automatically output. So for example, if you have a series of manual valves that need to constantly be managed to open or close to be able to control a flow or a level or a temperature, then you would have to have people running around to be able to control those valves manually to open and close all the time. So you'd have so many people out there. And clearly that's, that's not an efficient way to be able to run a plant or, or a manufacturing site or refinery. So in, instead, what instrumentation allows is, instrumentation allows something called a control valve instead of a manual valve. And control valves will basically be able to run themselves automatically instead of having somebody going out there to be able to control the valves by themselves or by hand. Now, if you can zoom out and think about how instrumentation or a, something, for example, like a control valve plays in a large scheme, it saves the company a lot of money and a lot of time. So talking more about control valves, we talked about how they can work automatically, but the question you should be asking is, okay, so how, how does it work automatically? How does it know when to close or when to open? How, how does it actually communicate and who, what does it communicate with? All right, so to answer that question, let's look at a quick cycle here. So the first step in that cycle is measuring device or the transmitter that actually does the sensing, whether it's sensing the flow rate or sensing a pressure or a level, and that's where the start of the, the, the cycle will begin. The transmitter will then output a signal to the controller or a receiver, which brings us to the second part of the cycle, which is the controller. So what does the controller do? So in short, basically what the controller will do is it'll take the input signal from the sensor or the transmitter, and it'll compare it to the set point. And the difference between the, the, the input signal to the set point is known as an error, and that error is what we need to fix or what the controller needs to fix. And the way it fixes that is the controller will calculate what the error is and it'll output a signal to the final control element to be able to fix that error. And that final control element is what's next on the this cycle that we're talking about. And usually the final control element will be a control valve. And that's how a control valve will know where to, whether to open a little bit more, whether to close a little bit more. So right behind me, I got a Fisher control valve, and on my other side, I got a Camflex control valve. And these two control valves, basically, one's a rotary and the other's a reciprocating, but they basically do the same thing to where they open and they close to put a control, whether it's a flow rate, a level in a column or, or a tank, um, it could even to be able to control a temperature too. These could be temperature control valves. So once a control valve changes position, it'll change a, let's say it, it'll change a flow rate in the pipe, which will then be sensed and picked up by the transmitter again, and then it'll tell the controller what, what input signal or where the process variable is at, and that full cycle continues and turns and turns, and, 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 and that cycle will keep going until it receives a balance or until the set point is maintained. And once the set point's maintained, that control valve stays in the same spot. So this is known as a feedback closed loop, which is super common and allows the, the plant or unit refinery to be able to run itself automatically. But from time to time, technology can fail. It can become sluggish. And uh, once it does, whether it's just one component that becomes sluggish or fails, it causes a domino effect in the process system. And every single hour or minute that uh, a unit or a process system is down can cost a company tons of money. So in today, today's environment or industry, companies are looking for instrumentation technicians that can solve issues and bring a unit or system back up safely to help them solve money and solve problems. Another point that I want to bring home is that 
Instrumentation communicates with commands and signals. And what kind of signals are we talking about? The signals we're talking about are, are mainly electronic signals, but there is also pneumatic signals. The most important thing to take from this video is that instrumentation is all about signals, it's all about commands. It's input signals from measuring devices to controllers and calculating the error to be able to send another output signal to a final control element. And with these components and equipment installed correctly, it allows instrumentation to do its job, which is to be able to allow the process or, or unit or company to be able to run on auto or automatically to be able to save time and save money and to be able to be more efficient as a whole. There's so much more to talk about when it comes to instrumentation. We just barely covered the surface, if that. If you got any value out of this video, please hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.